Welcome. In this lecture, I will introduce seismic risk and the basic risk model. Seismic risk is the risk of fatality or injury to people, the risk of damage to property, and the risk of interruption to business or social life. In most cases, it is defined as the potential economic, social, and environmental consequences of seismic event that may occur in a specified period of time. Fatality or injury can occur when a building is shaken and buildings collapse or partially collapse onto people. Even without collapse, building elements can fall internally and externally, causing injuries or fatalities. Damage and collapse are caused by the motion of the underground during the earthquake. The focus here will be the risk of fatality, which is also known as the risk to life safety. The basic risk model is dependent on three factors. First, seismic hazard, which is the probability of a specified level of ground motion at a specific location. Second, the vulnerability of the building, which is the probability of collapse or the falling of elements for a specified level of ground motion. And third, exposure, which is the probability of fatality or injury given the collapse or falling elements timed by the number of people in the buildings. There are different ways to define the seismic risk to life safety depending on the focal point of the risk assessment. When focusing on a building, localized personal risk is used. This is the probability of fatality of an imaginary person 100% of his time inside a specific building. This is measured by the probability per year. Whereas focusing on a person, individual risk is used. This is the probability of fatality for a specific person integrate over time in relation to the multiple buildings. This is also measured by the probability per year. When focusing on a community, we refer to community risk. This is the number of fatalities per year integrated over the community, normally defined as the number of people in a specific area. The scope of the risk will entail multiple buildings and multiple people. The unit of measurements is the number of fatalities per year. Note that the different buildings or building elements have different contributions to the individual or community risk. Buildings and building elements will be the highest contribution, will normally be prioritized for structural upgrading. While the risk for the different definitions can be computed easily, each outcome comes with uncertainty. The uncertainty of the seismic hazard, the vulnerability and of buildings and the exposure is normally large and could vary by a factor of 100. Therefore, the risk itself is defined with probability parameters. Normally, parameters are called the P10, the P50, the P90, with a probability of 10%, 50% and 90% of exceedance. This uncertainty has two contributions. The first is that the seismic actions has a highly variable nature. And second is the lack of knowledge and sufficient data needed to validate the knowledge with certainty. The seismic hazard has a large uncertainty component, as the models that describe the seismic hazard are based on limited experimental data. The same is true when considering the vulnerability of buildings and exposure. In society, risk is defined as broadly acceptable, broadly unacceptable or tolerable. Broadly acceptable risk means that no measures are needed to reduce the risk. Broadly unacceptable risk and those that can only be accepted in a very special circumstances and only for a limited period of time. Tolerable risk is between acceptable and unacceptable. If the risk is between this region, the aim is to make it as low as practically reasonable. This is the level that cannot be reduced further without cost to society that are disproportionate to the benefit gained, or when the solution is impractical to implement. In an international setting, the tolerable risk level of probability of fatality for the public is set between 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 6. In the Netherlands, it is assumed to be the same as the individual risk to life safety for other buildings related risk and is set to 10 to the minus 5th per year. The aim is to reduce the risk to life safety by prioritizing buildings with the highest risk contributions. This includes buildings with a combination of the highest seismic hazard, highest vulnerability, 
or the highest exposure. In general, this would be buildings with a high seismic hazard in the center of the seismic area, buildings that are very vertical, and buildings that have a lot of people in them on a permanent basis, such as schools, hospitals, and elderly homes. Now you have an understanding of the concept of seismic risk and the different risk definitions. In addition, you have learned which factors contribute to the seismic risk and which uncertainties are contributing to the computation of this risk.